fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the oat cereal that's ready to eat, Betty Crocker mixes, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions. Present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. Boy, did you ever have one of those rough days at school? Maybe you didn't get a real high mark on a test or score as many points as you wanted in a game. Well, that's the kind of a day a guy likes to get home and find his mother's baked a great big chocolate devil's food cake. Mmm, -hmm. a cake that says, I think you're swell no matter what. A perfect cake, the kind Mom gets every time she uses Betty Crocker chocolate devil's food cake mix. And is it easy? All the good chocolatey fixings are right in the package. All she has to do is add water and two fresh eggs for a cake that's so rich and homemade chocolatey good, you've got to have seconds, even thirds. Make sure there's lots of Betty Crocker chocolate devil's food cake mix in the cupboard at your house for a perfect cake every time you bake. Cake after cake after cake. It's guaranteed perfect by Betty Crocker of General Mills, Minneapolis. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I'm Silver. Dawn was breaking, and the faint slanting rays of the sun streamed through the cottonwoods, resting upon the slumbering forms of the Lone Ranger, Dan Reed, and Toto. Suddenly, the Lone Ranger awoke with a start as distant, harsh sounds intermingled with the chirping of the birds. Hello. Uh, what's the matter? Indians are attacking not far from here. Isn't that right? Here's a look. Come, Scout. Saddle up, Tonto. Maybe we can help. Uh, you get a big fellow to be silver. And you stay here in camp till we come back. Camp? Well hidden, Dan. You'll be safe here. She's got easy. All right, I'll, I'll stay that. here. You don't know what we're riding into, Dan. So don't leave camp until we return. I'll be waiting, sir. We'll not be long. Let's go, Tonto. Come on, Tonto. Come on, Scout. Hear anything now, Kimasabi? I'm sure we're going in the right direction, Tonto, but I... Look, Kimasabi! Off trail to right! Smoke! Monsilver! Within a few minutes, the Lone Ranger and Tonto halted before a scene of complete devastation. Oh, 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 no, 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 Cabin in smoldering ruins. Look, Kimasabi! Thunder cabin! The bodies of two men. Easy city, big fella. Maybe one of them is still alive. Come on, Tonto. Uh-huh. Uh, they didn't have a chance. Uh, dead? Both of them. Toto, these Indian arrows. Ah. Uh, them Apache arrows. This is serious. The Apaches are starting a general uprising now. It means... Oh, oh. Kimasabi. Someone's near. Listen. Uh, in there in bushes. Might be a trick. Be ready with your gun. Uh. Come on. Toto, it's an Indian boy. He's hurt. Uh. You're not kill. You're not kill. We won't hurt you, son. His arm is bleeding, Toto. We'll bandage it. Ah, Uma, let him up. Me, Toto, let him Little Fox. Oh, him say, him name, Little Fox. Fix arm. Him not much hurt, Kimasabi. Here, use his handkerchief. Uh -huh. He spoke a few English words a moment ago. Ah, uh, me no words. Great patchy chief Bigfoot, father of Little Fox. Him tell Little Fox words of white men. Oh, uh, oh. this not hurt much. Ah, oh, there. That's better now. Little Fox is very young to travel with Apache Braves on warpath. Apache Braves go to hunt. Little Fox follow on pony. 
White men in cabin see them braves on trail. Try kill them. Then braves make war cry. Kill them white men. Then the men in the cabin provoked this raid, Tonto, by firing upon a hunting party. May cause a general uprising of the Apaches. Ah, And what we do with little fox, Kimasabi? His pony is gone. We'll take him to his village. Oh, no. No, it's not good go near Apache village now. We'll go only close enough for little fox to join the tribe on foot. Come, little fox, we'll take you to your father's village. Taking the Indian boy on silver with him, the Lone Ranger and Tonto followed the trail left by the small Apache hunting party. Soon they approached the Indian village and drew rain. Little fox will be able to go from here on foot. Uh, yeah, I'll lift you down. There you are. Little fox like him, white man who hide face. Like him, great white horse. Like him, Tanto. We like you too, little fox. Uh, Someday, you'll grow up to be a friend to all white men. Other white men kill them, Indians. War drums say Apaches go soon kill them other white men. Little Fox, go now, join Chief, my father, Ulete. Ulete. Adios. That killing at the cabin has really started something, Toto. Ah, Little Fox, right. Apache beat war drum. We'll have to do something. And what we do? You stay here, watch developments. I'll go back to our camp and send Dan with a message to Fort Lancaster. If the situation grows more serious, come to the camp. We'll go warn the ranchers in the valley beyond Red Rock. Uh, me do it. Good. I'll meet you in camp. But be careful. Adios. Adios, Kimasabi. A short time later, the Lone Ranger hurriedly drew rein at the camp where Dan was waiting. <laughs> what happened, sir? Indians, Dan, Apaches. They burned down a cabin and killed two white men who had fired on their hunting party. The men should have known better than to do that. They must have become panicky. A foolish mistake may be the cause of a great deal more killing. What do you mean, sir? And the Apaches are easily aroused. We were close to their village. They've already started beating the war drums. They'll wipe out the ranches in the valley beyond unless something's done to stop them. Oh, golly. The only hope is to get the cavalry from Fort Lancaster, ten miles up the Pecos River Trail. I hate to have you take the risk, Dan, but... You mean you want me to go to the fort, sir? Yes. Are you willing to go? Oh, sure. I'll find the way all right. Victor will get me there in no time. The trail follows the river all the way, so you'll not miss it. Here, show the commandant of the fort this silver bullet. You'll know it's from me. Toto and I helped him a few weeks ago. Tell him what happened and ask him to bring all the troops he has to Red Rock. Yes, sir. I'll leave right away. Be careful, Dan. And get back as soon as possible. Sometime after Dan left, Toto returned to camp with news of the activity in the village of the Apaches. Hi, what did you learn, Toto? Well, it looked plenty bad for ranchers. Apache put on war paint, like many signal fire. That means Chief Bigfoot has decided to start a general uprising. Ah, Apache chief, plenty angry. Whole big council of war. Plenty Apache come to village. With all those braves, Bigfoot will very easily wipe out everyone in the valley tunnel. Ah. Dan has gone to Fort Lancaster for troops. Huh? Him go alone? Yes, I hated to send him, but we'll be needed here. Ah. Ranchers need plenty help against Indians. Yes, I know. Here's Silver. <laughs> we'll ride through Rocky Pass to the valley and warn the ranchers. I have a plan that may keep the Indians back until the troops arrive. If we do that, we'll... Uh, horse come, Kimasabi. Maybe it's Victor. Victor? But by now, Dan must be almost to the fort. Look, Kimasabi. Victor come with empty saddle. Who, Victor? Who? Easy, steady, quiet, fella. Quiet. Steady, Victor. How do I... Wait, look here. Huh? And what you find? An arrow. An Apache arrow stuck in the cantle of the saddle. Uh, Apache chase, Dan, look like. Yes. We'll follow the trail Dan took. How do I? Don't know what to think, but... It not look good, Kimasabi. But maybe Dan not get hurt. Oh, I hope not. Easy, steady, big fella. Look out, easy, fella. Move, silly. After riding for some distance, the Lone Ranger and Tonto reached the place where Dan had turned back. They pulled to a halt. Oh, 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 o
near where Dan turned Victor round. If Dan had fallen off, we'd have found him before this. We follow trail back, maybe? Yes. Come, Silver. Come, Scout. Come, Father. Keep a sharp lookout, Tonto, on both sides of the trail. He might have rolled off into the bushes. Ah. I shouldn't have sent him to the fort. I'm afraid that when we do find Dan... Wait, he... Keep us up. Oh, Scout. Oh, Father. Oh, oh, oh. Easy. Oh. Steady. Now, horse, stop here. Victor's hoof prints go back, long trail. Indian ponies turn to side. Maybe them go to village of Bigfoot. Then you think they've taken Dan prisoner? Ah. We go to village, try and get Dan? Tonto, if we do that, we'll not have time to warn the ranchers nor get the troops. Maybe. But what we do about Dan, Apache not good to prisoner. I realize that too well. Then what we do, Kimasabi? Tonto, if we don't warn the ranchers and get the troopers, there'll be a massacre in the valley. But if we don't try to save Dan now, it may be too late. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. All over the country, in every direction, how you, how you doing is the question. And here's one the happy, happy, happy people have to say. Weedy, oh, weedy, send the do, 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 and okay. Okay. Take champions down south. They sure enough know about Weedy's. The Southland's favorite Wheaties fan is Musial, known as Stan the Man. Because when he swings his mighty bat, he nearly knocks that baseball flat. Another Southland pride and joy is Bobby Lane, a Wheaties boy. Because when he starts to turn on steam, he's sure a one-man football team. Just ask Stan Musial or Bobby Lane. They know the secret of Wheaties energy. There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Wheaties, breakfast of champions. Keep on eating your weenies and you'll be do, 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 and okay, okay. Now to continue. Tuttle waited silently as the Lone Ranger, torn between his affection for his young nephew Dan Reed and his duty to the ranchers, paused a moment before making his difficult decision. Tonto, our duty is plain. I'll ride to warn the ranchers and help with the plans against the Indians. You go south to Fort Lancaster for the troopers. And if it's not too late, we'll try to save Dan. Ah. Uh, me leave now. All right, and hurry, Tonto, hurry. Uh, adios, Kimosabe. Adios. Get him up, scout! For a brief moment, the Lone Ranger looked in the direction of the Indian village. Then he urged Silver forward toward the valley. Come on, Silver! Decision, the masked man exerted all his efforts toward accomplishing what he had decided to do. Racing against time, he rode his fleet-footed white stallion through Rocky Pass, a long, high-walled canyon, forming the only entrance to the valley beyond. Once in the valley, the Lone Ranger went from ranch to ranch. He realized the risk he took because of his mask, but the surprise of the mask was forgotten in the sincerity and urgency of the message he brought. Oh, 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 easy, steady, big fella. Gather your men together. Have them drive your cattle to the valley end of the pass. The Apaches are on the warpath. Finally, the last and largest spread was reached, and the Lone Ranger drew rein with a sigh of relief. Who's in tarnation are you? What's the idea of riding into my ranch yard wearing a mask? Who are you? I'm Fred Moreland, owner of this spread. I... You see here, I ask for your name, you got me telling you mine. Names don't matter right now, Mr. Moreland. I came to warn you that the Apaches are on the warpath. And they plan to hit the ranchers in this valley first. Hey, look here, stranger. It's a right worrisome bit of news you brought. Them Apaches are coming here in the warpath. We ain't got much of a chance. Now listen to me, all of you. I've sent someone south to Fort Lancaster for the troopers. All your ranches are in the valley west of the pass. That's right. The Indians will gather on the plains east of Rocky Pass. If we keep them from getting through the pass long enough to let the troopers come up from the south, you and your ranches will be saved. Hey, that's right. But how do you expect to do it? I'll explain my plan to you as we hurry to the pass. I don't delay. I suggest we start there at once with every available man and all your cattle. If I'm wrong, you have nothing to lose. 
But if I'm right, you'll save your homes and lives. Now, hurry. All right, come on. Let's have a go. Later, at the valley entrance west of the pass, the Lone Ranger watched as more and more ranchers arrived driving Ah, cattle before them. Men, you've all come here for one purpose, to hold back the Indians until the troopers arrive from the south. In that way, you hope to save your families and your homes. The time is short. Lookouts have been posted high on the side of the canyon walls to signal us when the Indians approach the pass to come into this valley. Now we're greatly outnumbered. So our one hope is to keep them from coming through until help arrives. That's why I asked for your cattle. All right, now quiet, everybody. Listen to the masked man's plan. Some of you will lose your cattle. But that's better than losing your homes or your lives. That's what your plan. The plan is simple. When the Apaches are sighted, the lookout will fire two shots as a signal. When you hear that signal, drive the cattle into the pass. When the Indians start him to the other side... A single shot will be fired. That's your signal to start shooting into the air behind the cattle. So they'll stampede through the pass toward the oncoming Indians. The stampeding cattle will rout the Indians, and they won't have a chance to get together again before the troopers get here. Now remember, don't start the stampede until the single shot is fired. When everything was in readiness, the Lone Ranger with Fred Moreland rode partway into Rocky Pass to a cleft in one of the side walls, big enough to shield their horses and themselves. From this point, they could watch the effect of their plan when it would be put into action. The first signal. The Indians have been sighted. I hope those ranchers do things right. I hear them driving the cattle into the pass. The Apaches have entered the pass. That's the second signal. Yeah, the boys have started the stampede. They'll be coming by in a minute. There they come. The cattle are stampeding now. Those savages think that's the ranchers coming at them. So they're ready to fight as they ride in from the East Plain. I... Chump and Jehoshaphat. There are two kids riding in front from the East Plain, heading this way in front of the Indians. Dan and Little Fox. What's that? Who? They're heading right into the herd. They'll be trampled. Montilla! The Lone Ranger cried a warning to them. Dan, Little Fox! Turn! Go back! The boys heard. They wheeled and started back. Quickly, Silver's magnificent stride closed the gap between them and the Lone Ranger. Little Fox's pony stumbled and fell. Keep going, Dan. That hole in the cliff. Over to the left. Keep going. One Silver! As the fast galloping Silver approached the small, frightened Little Fox, the Ranger leaned forward to the side. Then, grasping the pommel of the saddle with one hand, he made a sudden downward movement. Steady! Sweeping the form of Little Fox into his free arm and lifting the boy to the saddle. Now run, Silver, run! Montilla! With even more effort and speed, the big stallion leaped forward, heading toward the hole in the left wall where Dan had gone. Faster, Silver, faster! Forward, whoa, whoa! He'll be all right. Tell me how you... The troopers have come. The ranches are safe now. Come on, we'll go meet Toto and return little Fox to his people. On the plains just beyond the pass... Toto and two officers had brought their horses to a halt. They watched as the last of the cattle came through from the valley to the west. Apaches... Not for the ranchers now, Captain Lynn. Well, I don't know whether we take credit for that or not, Tonto. I never saw anything like the way those Indians rushed out of the pass before the stampeding herd. <laughs> I guess some of them are still going. Yeah, that's right, Lieutenant. Who, 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 who? Howdy, Captain. My name's Fred Moreland. I own a spread over the valley. Glad to meet you, Mr. Moreland. I'm telling you, I just saw the greatest thing I've ever seen in my life. A mask, hombre, who came to help us save two boys from the stampede. In fact, he grabbed a little Indian boy almost under the cattle's hooves. You say two boys? Yep, the other one was a white lad riding a fine white horse. And then, then mask friend, Pine Dan. The boy you told us about? Ah. Yeah, hey, look, here comes a mask man now. Oh, 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 Hi, Kimmer, Tommy. Hi, Dan. Hi. Hi. Golly, it's good to see you. Uh, 
How you get here, Dan? Well, some Apaches took me prisoner. They kept me tied up in a wigwam. Little Fox came in to look at me, and he was playing with a silver bullet. <laughs> um, me see him take bullet from your gun belt this morning, Kimasabi. I know. Uh, little Fox untied me, and then we sneaked away and went to our camp where I got Victor. After that, we rode to warn you that the Apaches were coming. I'm glad you're here and safe, Dan. Him friend of Little Fox. Man who hide face friend of Little Fox. Me tell Chief Bigfoot, my father, not hurt friends, not hurt white man. That's a fine spirit to grow up with, Little Fox. Hey, here comes a small group of Apaches carrying a piece of white cloth. Chief, my father come. I'll put you down now, Little Fox. Oh, me Chief Bigfoot. How, Chief Bigfoot? Me I te amo. No te amo le. Ah, me see masked men who ride white horse. Pick up little fox. Save him life. Apaches never attack white men in valley again. Apache smoke peace pipe. Bigfoot has spoken. Little fox, him ask it. Captain, looks like you can take your troopers back to Fort Lancaster. That masked man sure seems to have gotten everything under control by himself. It was the cooperation of the ranchers that did it, Mr. Moreland. The troopers will escort Chief Bigfoot and his braves to the reservation. Yeah, the ranchers will get their men and round up the cattle now. It'll be a job sorting them out, but thank heaven our homes and family are safe. We hope that from now on, peace will exist between the Indians and white men. Progress in the West will be rapid when a permanent peace is established. That's right. Thanks for your cooperation, Captain. And for that of the ranchers, Mr. Moreland. We'll ride this way and see you all again sometime. Come, Tonto, Dan. Adios. Adios. Come on, Victor. Would to heaven we had more men like him in the West, Mr. Morland. Say, you talk like you know who he is. I do. He's known as the Lone Ranger. Little Fox always be friend to Lone Ranger. copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to the Lone Ranger brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.